Toronto Raptors uh, president of Masai Ujiri is vindicated this morning after footage emerged, yes, from June 13, 2019, incident when the Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship against Golden State Warriors in Oakland, California. Yeah, so Masai was blocked from coming onto the court by a deputy. So the deputy claimed Masai pushed him. But let's take a look at the footage. Here we go. So, so you're okay. going to see Masai to your, on the right side of the screen with the red circle around him. The police officer is the one with the on the left with the red circle around him. So Masai is going to walk up. So you see Masai approaching. You see the police officer there on the left. So here comes Masai. He's starting to get his credentials out. And a push. Pushed by the deputy. Oh. So Masai's like, what the heck? And here we go again. Pushed by the deputy number two. And that's when Masai comes back and pushes back. So this creates a whole situation. Then you're eventually going to see... Like, so yeah, obviously there's a huge commotion now at this point. So then Kyle Lowry eventually comes over and see the cameras all move over. So Kyle Lowry makes his way over and brings Masai onto the court. So yeah, this is the first time we're seeing this footage. Listen, there's so much to okay, talk about. <laughs> I know, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm waiting for you all to finish. I'm like, can I talk now? Um, yeah, yeah. So, so do the rest of your script, uh, Sangita. Yeah, the police department said they would pursue criminal charges against Masai. The police officer actually filed a lawsuit against Masai in February, saying he suffered injuries to his teeth, jaw, head, and chin. Yeah, so Masai hasn't spoken out since the video was released last night. But here's what Masai said last June, a couple days after the incident. But first, here's the body cam footage. My lawyers are uh, updating me. Um, uh, honestly, I'm just good with, with that incident. I'm going to respect um, uh, what the process is there uh, and the investigation. And uh, I am confident about who I am as a person, my character, and as a human being. So um, I'll, for now, I'll just respect you know, um, their process there and, um, and wait for the next steps. I'm going to leave all my, uh, my comments till um, the whole investigation is done. Um, I think that's the, that's the fair way and the right way to operate when, when things like this um, uh, do happen. So. Um, I, I respect authority, and I'll wait, wait till um, that happens. Mommy just says, Okay, Andrea, wow. now you can go. Uh, <laughs> says, wow, that's no grand speaking. Bartholomew says, that's so bizarre, but it's really not that bizarre. But yeah, go ahead, Andrea. <laughs> okay, when I saw this come across my phone yesterday and I got the alert, first of all, I wasn't surprised because when this initially happened, I think we all had the same without seeing this video. The body cam video is just the evidence that people needed to see the people who are on the fence. I was not on the fence. You have the president of the Raptors who are in a playoff game who just won. He is rushing to the to, to the court. And the way that that whole situation transpired was a moment that I think a lot of black people are just like, mm, OK. Um, so now that we see all the stuff and now that we have all the court documents, what I find most disgusting about this is that this police officer, Strickland, is also claiming that he was emotionally scarred and has not worked since that incident and is claiming that he is going to be on full-time, needs full-time disability because of that incident, because he felt that he was, um, I forget the exact wording in the court documents, but he really feels like he was the victim in that situation. And what's so disgusting about that is that it's like, did you know who Masai was before you pushed him? Because this seems very convenient that at your height and size as a police officer who's been in the force for a very long time, that this seems to be the thing that has emotionally scarred you. Or are you looking for a check from the Raptors organization? Um, I hope that Masai's lawyers countersue for the aggravation for ruining his opportunity to enjoy this win, this first win yeah. with his team. He, Strickland took that away from Masai. And you cannot get that moment back. And all of the subsequent nonsense that he has claimed, he went to the hospital and said that he had injuries to his face and his teeth. 
they show the photo. There is nothing wrong with his very chubby face. It is intact completely. And this is just such an egregious, egregious case. And I really hope that at the end, I like the way Masai is also handling himself with this situation by letting his lawyers do what they need to do and not saying anything, because I'm sure he has, if I were him, I would have a lot of things I'd want to say. So kudos to him for keeping his cool and not letting this get, you know, getting his emotions get the best of him and focusing on what's important, which is his team and his team winning another championship. But this whole Strickland situation, I think the courts should make an example out of him. And really he should be, there's also been photos of him showing, even though he says he's not been able to work, because of this very traumatizing uh, situation. There has been photos sh uh, showing him um, carrying boxes out to dinner with his wife, doing things on multiple occasions since that incident. So I hope that the court makes an example out of him. I hope that he loses his job because he has abused the power that he has as a police officer. There was no reason for him to be so aggressive. You also, if you look at the video, Masai has his credentials. He's yes. just putting them inside his jacket. It's not like he doesn't have them and he's a plain clothes person. Yeah, running ask for the credentials. Ask for the credential before you shove him in the chest. We've all been to situations, especially us. We go to media events all the time where in order for you to get past that rope, you have to show your credentials. Have you ever been shoved in the chest? I haven't. There's no need mm -hmm. for that. You just have a simple conversation with that person. And Strickland clearly came out of the gate very aggressive. And, but I think what's so insulting is all of the things that he's claiming that he uh, has, how this whole situation has really hurt him. It's been really disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not surprised the way he did that. Uh, he's taking advantage of, like, like you said, he's probably trying to make a profit off of the Raptors. But right, it's it's why didn't you just ask for the credentials instead of pushing him? And I had an opportunity to talk to Masai about it uh, off camera. We did an interview as well. He couldn't really talk about it because it was important and everything that's coming out of it. And uh, yeah, he, he felt he was racially profiled. Like this was an incident that he will not forget. And it was an incident that, like you said, he was robbed of this experience of winning a championship. But the last few months, I've been able to talk to a few people who are part of the NBA and have a conversation of how they feel. And they feel it in certain, certain places where they do feel, uh, do play games, where their family is sitting uh, courtside, or they, they're moved around because of the skin, the color of their skin. They are told not to sit in the front row, even though you have seats, they move them around. Like this is a thing that happens in different states and it's unfortunate. I mean, this is not what the NBA is about. We're here to celebrate basketball, but when it comes to that, hopefully this is an example that change needs to happen within the NBA and the way the players are treated, the way their family are treated, the way people who go watch the game who are courtside to be taken care of. So I think this is gonna be a great, like you said, he should be charged. He should not be, uh, he shouldn't have a job from this experience, but Masai, man, after seeing that video last night, I get it, I, I know he was shoved, but I was so excited that he's been vindicated. Truly, truly, this was a moment. And he's only vindicated because this is caught on camera, right? Yeah. That's the only reason he's yeah. vindicated because of this, because they're like the audacity of find that a police officer does this in front of a huge crowd. Mm -hmm. And I guess the police, right away, the police are going to charge, we're going to criminally come after Masai, even though there's a crowd of witnesses, witnesses that I'm sure were never interviewed. The only reason that Masai is now vindicated is because someone got it on video. And how many times we've heard that when it comes to black people being killed. It's only because it's caught on video. We, we don't hear about all the ones that aren't caught on video. So, I mean, it goes back to the argument that, you know, I can't remember the list that people make is that, you know, oh, you know, he, that person must have come out at the police officer in a threatening way. But just obviously Masai didn't come out in a threatening way. You can't say, you know, he looked a certain way. He's wearing a suit because, you know, there's a whole argument with, oh, well, he shouldn't have been wearing a hoodie. He shouldn't have been walking outside at night, all that kind of stuff. It's like, this is a guy in a suit. He's, you can see his credentials, but the police officer still thought he could get away with it in front of a crowd. And he was going to get away with it. The only reason a year later is that Messiah is now vindicated is because there is video. And now the police department is going to have to answer it. It reminds me of the incident. I don't remember the, the gentleman's name, but the uh, peaceful protester in Buffalo who came up and tried to, I can't remember, he, like, he came mm -hmm. up to the cops and the cops pushed him down head split open, bleeding on the sidewalk. Initially, the police department, you know, had, I can't even remember what their story was. They made up some ridiculous story of what actually happened, yeah. then the video comes out. So then they have to change the story. So this is another circumstance that like, it's just ridiculous that the truth only comes yeah. out if there's video. <laughs> yeah, so what I know, I'm tearing up. Yeah, I'm, yeah. It's, and, it's, yeah. Um, and Graham, you may, 
Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying in New, the fact the fact that you just said that it makes me so emotional. The fact that we have to catch this all on camera to get justice is ridiculous. But it's at that point, and and talking to a dad recently who um, is actually from Jamaica, and he said he has taught his son the importance of getting it on camera. If he comes to an incident where he feels that he's being bullied or there's uh, a racial profiling, he said to get it on camera. His son's 10 years old, and this is what he has to teach him to make sure he is safe and that, that he is taking care of himself. So like, yeah, that, yeah, you're so right, Graham. Yeah, no, no, and th this is part of the systemic racism that people don't even realize that they carry is that if they walk into a situation and there is a white person and a black person, they will, and we're not even talking about a white person in a uniform, people will naturally, because of that unconscious racism, assume that the black person is in the wrong. So what's happened now with the technology that we have on our phone is that the black person is now able to record the whole situation. We saw with Amy and her dog in the park in, and her dog in Central Park with the bird watcher where she called 911 yeah. and she knew she was being recorded, but still she felt yeah. so comfortable in, in lying while being recorded about what was happening in her interaction with this black man. And really and truly, you know what's so funny? You, you know, when you think about this, police officer having this altercation, you're right, in a very crowded stadium where everybody's gonna have their phones out. There's also gonna be cameras that are gonna catch it. They were not willing to really take Masai's side until they got the body cam. It was the right. body cam footage that really is damaging. And I'm sure those lawyers had to jump through a lot of hoops of fire to even get access to that body cam footage, but that's exactly what it's for. But I think in, if you're not a great, if you're not a good police officer, this is the thing, this is the nail in your coffin where it's like, well, what are you gonna say now? What are you gonna isn't say now crazy? with your own body cam? Yeah, isn't yeah. it crazy that they have a body cam on? He knows he has his body cam on and he still did it. It has yeah. almost well, no value to them knowing that the, they, they, this could be released and he still did it. And he thought he was going to be okay with that. Because he's because he's to think about it. Yeah, when I see those situations, what I say like, and George Floyd's death was exactly the same thing, where it's like you're on camera with your knee on someone's neck as they are dying, and you look so unbothered. You know why? A, you know you're getting away with it. B, this is not your first kick at the can. You've done. You've done something like this before and you went home and nothing happened then and you're very comfortable that nothing's going to happen now. Why else would you be so comfortable in a place where there's all of these witnesses? Why else? Because you know yeah. that the system works in your favor. And this is why people are like, defund the police. This is not working. And by the way, can we discuss how much that police officer with the Masai Ujiri situation is making a year? $224,000 a year, not including benefits. Yeah. So you're almost making a quarter of a million dollars and this is what you're doing? This is how you're protecting your city? This is what you're doing at a game when you have fans and players and you should be protecting the, the players from anybody who's gonna do wrong to any of the players? This is what you do? Interesting.